Hello, this is Dr. Michael Shear with 3D Dentist. This video is describing a slightly more advanced technique with working with a more challenging STL file from a patient I did an intraoral scan in in my practice. So I'll be describing some additional features in my CAD modeling software to clean up the scan and then to get it ready for 3D printing. I'm going to go ahead and open my models folder and all I have is her maxilla uh, at least in this folder but I, I did scan her 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 mandible or her lower as well as I bring that into my mesh mixing software what you're gonna see is is in this STL file this is actually a RPD removable partial denture with a few teeth this was on a 95 year old lady that um, I wanted to scan for a variety of reasons, but the biggest reason was is that she had difficulty with alginate impressions and we're building her um, some lower removable appliance and the digital scan was the way to go with her. But as you can see, I ran into a little bit of challenges around the facial flanges right in here and right in here. Now, of course, what I could do is, is I could use my other other technique using my analysis and inspector button and clearing up my balloons. So now I have all my balloons all cleared up. If I wanted to, I could extrude this model, but the challenge is some of this extra material I have out the sides, which will make for a really, really messy print. So I draw your attention to the select feature and I could always use this little you know, um, circular object that pops up in front of me and just click that. If you do that you can then go up to edit and discard to cut it away. Alternatively what you can do is in the select feature I can also draw a line. If I left click once and then just click a few different positions along this outside portion this is like taking a buffalo knife and trimming the outside part of the model. Clicking on the starting point will select everything in a nice clean linear fashion. Hitting the X key on my keyboard or I can click on the discard button starts to clean it up. Since all I need here is, is the occlusal features of this patient, if I also wanted to just make a really really clean model I can just do the same thing discard that, come in here, do the same thing in here, hit X again or discard if I wanted to. I can even clean up this little area just to make it really really nice. And then moving across here there's this one last little messy area over here. If I do that, and right in here is the easiest way to do that is just to select that with that sphere tool. If I click on this and I notice, oh, I don't want to get rid of all of that. If I hit my actions undo and undo feature, I'm back to here. All I want to do is, is delete this area right out in here. So I'm going to clear all of this away, but I want to keep this part of the tooth. If I hit the control button on my keyboard and left click while holding control, it will deselect. And notice that this little dark circle, as I wrap on a three dimensional object, it actually traces in three dimensions. So notice here how it drops into the embrasures. What I can see here is, is that if I approach it from just the right three dimensional view, if I hit control and left click, I'm going to deselect all of this good part of the tooth I want to keep and then only select that little part that I want to delete. Edit, discard, and it very easily clears that away. As I slide across here, maybe I want to clear out a little bit of this occlusal surface or maybe not. Now it looks pretty clean looking across everywhere what I'm going to do 
is to just verify everything looks nice. I'm going to run my inspector button one more time. Analysis inspector. Verify that I just have that one orb or the one balloon. I don't want to touch that one or it also it'll fill in like the NetFab does. I'm going to hit select and control A to select everything. Move my model into a position where I can see it. I hit the D button on the keyboard or I come up to edit extrude and it should extrude really nicely. If it looks like this kind of reddish color, that means I've got something that won't let me extrude it cleanly. So if I hit even this and I draw my slider up, nothing happens. You want to see this nice yellow color and usually the reason is is that you've got a part of the model that's not allowing you to extrude. So it's probably this area. If I cut that away. And sometimes it can be this right in here. Or even these little areas where it's just not a clean looking part of the scan. If I went ahead and took some of these features and go ahead and clean out some of these little areas of scanning errors on the palette and just cut that away. Since it's just a, an opposing model, I don't really need all of that stuff as part of the scan. And sometimes in these really challenging cases where I have to come around these back corners, if I carefully clear out some of this excess back in here, that should give my scan just enough to go ahead and process to allow it to extrude to form a base. So again, selecting it all, extruding. Now at this point we see that it wants to extrude properly. It doesn't give me that purple color. I'm going to go ahead and say just arbitrarily negative 10 and hit flat. and it's giving me a nice base. So after I hit the accept button, and deselect, now I've got a really nice clean opposing model ready for 3D printing. And these types of cases are really, really tricky because so, sometimes it just takes a little bit of troubleshooting finding the spot either of the uh, the partial uh, move partial denture clip here or this part of the tooth back here. Um, sometimes these models can be a little bit tricky um, going ahead and segmenting out finding the little error spots. So that's why that NetFab software also comes into handy. If you reach a spot in the mesh mixer software where it just is not cooperating, try throwing into NetFab basic and a lot of times that fixes it. If not, going with the mesh mixer software you should be able to find it just takes a little bit of troubleshooting now at this point I can go ahead and hit export give it my same Maxilla name and final or final mesh and now I can import that into my um, 3d printer software so this is dr. Michael Shear with the 3d dentist uh, this has been a um, video describing a little bit more of the advanced uh, techniques to to take on a little bit more of a challenging intraoral scan. As you saw that one was a little bit tricky but with a couple of little software checks you should be able to get it cleared up ready for 3D printing. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for additional YouTube videos.